market. COVID-19 has not only changed our lifestyle, it also has a great impact on our economy. And stock market plays a very important role in an economy. And COVID-19 is supposed to be a helpful on this market. So we have to uh, tackle this situation with patience and having more planning. And keeping in this mind, in our mind, is Delta University is there to arrange a webinar on the impact and aftermath of COVID-19 on the stock market. East Delta University is always promised to bring the new avenues to the learner. So today we have, let's meet, let's introduce our today's speaker. We have today Mohammad Rukibul Hassan. He's a founder of MFX Center. He was born on 18 February and graduated from East Delta University under the School of Business Administration. Mr. Hassan has started forest trading since 2011. He uses market context and price actions elements to understand the market behavior. He has started his journey as a financial market analyst with InstaForex, XNAS Limited, etc. And he was also a founder of Emicas Corporation. Now, uh, he was also, uh, he is now, uh, he has become also founder of MFX Center since 2015. Now he is a senior financial market analyst. So here introduce our speaker, today's speaker, Mr. Mohammed Rokibul Hassan. Please, Mr. Mohammed Rokibul Hassan. Please. And before start the presentation, before start his presentation, I'm requesting all of you to please mute your microphone and also turn off your video. After his presentation, the floor will be open to all of you and you will be given the floor to ask you the question. So we have a question answer session also. So please till that, so please uh, turn off your uh, video and uh, mute your microphone. Thank you. Now, Mr. Mohammed Rakibul Hassan, please. Thank you, ma'am, for introducing me. Hello, guys. This is Andrew Kibul Hassan. So, uh, before talking further, I want to share my screen over here. Please do let me know if you are all watching my screen. Great. Hope everyone is watching my screen right now. So, I'm going to start my presentation. Okay. So as Mem has stated, our topic is impacts and aftermath of COVID-19 in the capital markets. So as a presenter, uh, I'm uh, Amdi Rokibul Hassan, as well as a student of East Delta University. And uh, I have graduated from East Delta University in 2014. And uh, while I was studying in East Delta University, uh, I was trading in the market, though that time I was not a good trader, but yes, Currently, I'm in a good position so that I can help all you guys uh, to make something out of this market. So who I am, and this is the details. I'm a student of East Delta University, a proud one. I have uh, completed the Chartered Market Technician degree from CMTA USA. Uh, that is the Chartered in Market Analysis. And I'm the founder of MFX Center and Emicos Corporation, both are my companies. And I'm also a speaker of FinTech Event Center and a speaker of ShowFX Asia. I'm also a partner of FinTech Events as well. So I have worked in the international firms like Orbex, XNES, InstaForex, IronFX, and currently working as chief analyst in my own company and also a senior market analyst at a to z Markets, All in Trade, Datadog, and StocksUp. My main... Uh, working segments are actually the financial markets actually though i have studied in human resource management and marketing in east delta university but with finance 101 i started to like uh, finance and stock market though i'm not a student of finance but after graduating i started to learn more about finance so 
what I've learned, what I've experienced so far, and after learning ABCDs from Tabasum Mem of finance, about finance, so, so uh, I'm going to share with you about a very serious topic today that is coronavirus, AKA COVID-19. We all know about the coronavirus, right? So it is nothing new. The social media, the newspapers, the news channels, everything is bombarded with the information of COVID-19 and this coronavirus, right? So in this situation, when everything is going down, it's going down like uh, nose diving into uh, some kind of sea or ocean floor. So in this case, in this scenario, what we should do and what advantages and disadvantages we have and what we can have benefits from, we'll be discussing this in this webinar. So what COVID-19 has done already? Apart from thousands of deaths still today, it's about 100,000 plus. It has impacted the world economy, right? So it has brought a very severe recession. And uh, let me tell you, most of us are not still aware of it. So current situation, as stated by very various economists, that most, it is the most difficult situation since the World War II. Currently, the international trade and commerce is down. Unemployment rate is rising rapidly. Global stock market crash is there. Then there's lockdown. People cannot go to their work. And uh, the services and the productions of goods are stopped. And there is also cancellation of future. So as you all know, that the Bangladesh government's industry is going to face a big catastrophe. Okay. So as a result, Recession is hitting the globe currently, but the disastrous thing is that it is hitting instantly, everywhere. Like um, in 2008 or 2000, 2000, whenever there was a recession, the market was on, focused on just one country or two countries or even three or four countries. But this time, it has impacted more than 100 countries in less than six months. So that is a big disaster. And uh, sitting in Bangladesh, sitting in my country where it has not gone so far right now, still now. So we can't actually imagine what is going to happen next in the global economy. So we are going to get some of the glimpse of the upcoming events. And we are also going to discuss what has already happened. If you see in the United States employment, unemployment and uh, employment data, we can see that in March 4, 2020, in the screen, if you can see that US non-firm employment change, that is the employment data, has gone down rapidly. In a single go, previously it was at 275,000. It was forecasted minus 100,000, but the actual result was minus 701,000. Just look at the figure. That's like 701K. That's like huge, more, more than seven times of the overall uh, forecast. And if you look at the unemployment rate, it has gone up higher, like 4.4%. If you just look at the graph over here, it is at 4.4% where it was at 4% earlier, even in 2020, starting of 2020. And some economists suggest that by the end of this June or July, that is the second quarter of the year, there will be 30% more unemployment in the United States alone. So just think of it, United States being one of the mother economy of global economies. We can just, you can actually just imagine what is going to happen next. If you see in the oil market, when COVID-19 started its journey in January, it started to impact the oil, the price of the crude oil, that is XTI or WTI, whatever you can say. But the price has gone down from 63.50 to $20 per barrel. And for your information, a barrel consists of 158.987 liters of oil. That's like if, if you convert it in Bangladeshi taka, it will be like less than 10 taka per liter. We'll be getting the oil. Okay. So 
That is the catastrophe of the overall oil market currently. And if you look at the US 500, that's S&P 500 of US uh, stock market index, it has also gone down from 3,400 to 2,000, around 2,200. You can see over here, what a big plummet. If you just see the market over here, in 2016, the market gained certain bullish momentum. I say bullish, bullish means if it is upward momentum. Sorry, it is a technical uh, no. trading term. So, so upward momentum did uh, was quite consistent, but it did plummet a bit in 2018. But again, it gained momentum, and then it reached the highest peak at 3,400 area. Then the price plunged. It is, a, it is like a nose drive. If you see in this chart, what you're seeing is that power candle, these are the candles, power candle represent one week. That means from 2016 to 2019, the overall move was engulfed in just one month. Four candles, one, two, three, and four. So four years of price action was engulfed within one month in US. And S&P 500 consists of all the A class of shares in the American stock market. Whether it's Apple, whether it's Microsoft, or whether it's Facebook, every shares have gone down. If you're talking about the crypto market, crypto, crypto like Bitcoin, we all know about Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin was invented after the 2008 recession. So many people, many traders, many investors, uh, like they assume that this coronavirus recession can be beaten by Bitcoin. But it was a shocking that crypto market was also plunged. The Bitcoin lost its value from $10,000 per coin to $4,000 or $5,000 per coin. And it's still struggling. As you can see over here, the bearish trend, the selling trend is still there. The downward trend is still there. So crypto market has given us a big shock this time. Whether it's Bitcoin, whether it's Ethereum, whether it's Litecoin, every cryptocurrency coins are struggling. Though it managed to uh, gain value of 20,000, around 20,000 in 2017. One Bitcoin was worth $20,000. So this time, even the crypto market is also struggling. So let's see what is going to happen next. Apart from the New York Stock Exchange and New York indexes, we have the DEX, German index, France index, Euro stocks index, Netherlands index, S&P of Canada, Nikkei of Japan, FTSE of uh, FTSE 100 of Britain, then US, Switzerland, and China, every stock market has gone down with more than 10%. And it is going to go down further in the coming days if the situation doesn't develop, develop well. So you might ask, what about our Bangladesh stock market? What is going to happen next? Our Bangladesh stock market didn't have that kind of impact because it was already going down from 2019. You can see in the chart, in February 2019, the price of our DSEX, that is Dhaka Stock Exchange Index, was at around 6,000, Dhaka per DSEX. Then it went down, it went down, and in January, it gained some momentum, but again, due to coronavirus impact, after February, it went down. And currently, it is residing around 4,000 Taka. So it has gone down to around 2,000. And it will go down further as our garments industry is struggling. Our, all our service industry and production industry will suffer this coronavirus recession. As the global, sub, global, in, uh, global countries like um, United States, Canada, and um, Europe is struggling, Bangladesh will have its own piece of cake as well. So what more to come? We've seen a lot of catastrophes. What more to come? First thing, world economy is going to dig deeper. It's going to take another nosedive. Just mark my words, world economy is going to dig a further, uh, like another 100 feet. 
Okay, unemployment in developed and developing country will skyrocket. They will go high. Whether you are developed country or you are developed, even in Australia, my brother lives there. He said, one of the biggest airlines in Australia has fired ninety percent of office employees. And though they, though they are secured by government, but um, I don't know how long the government can support the citizens in this recession, this severe recession. The crime rates will go high, the scamming rates will go high, businesses will cost, cut costs severely to make the ends meet, actually to survive. Businesses will cut severe costs. And if somehow COVID-19 has got an antidote, it will take around 1.5 years at least to get recovered only for the A-class businesses. A-class businesses like Amazon, uh, Facebook, then uh, Microsoft, Apple, every A-class kind of businesses. Okay. And the number of in-house workers will be decreased because no one will be um, hiring people to come and work in their premises. Some businesses will also so sell their office and go online. And outsourcing will be increased. And in the coming days, people will have to think about digitalizing everything. What East Delta University has already done, they're taking the classes online. So this is what every university will follow. Just mark my words. This is a mark that East Delta University has set that will be followed by every universities in the coming days. So is there any positive in this negative situation? Of course, yes. Every negative has a positive thing. Without positive, there is no negative. Without negative, there is no positive. So what's the positive in here? What a crisis actually does? First, we need to understand and answer this question. What a crisis actually does. A financial crisis divides people on two sides. First side is the people who cannot like forecast or predict the shock, how much the shock is going to happen. Like as an analyst like me, we are currently working with uh, such um, shock and we are trying to figure out what, it, what we can do so that we can survive in this market, in this catastrophe, in this recession. But there are some people who doesn't even know what is going to happen. They are just sitting in their home watching Netflix, doing nothing else, right? Exercising, watching Netflix and not making any plans. But another type of people is currently making plans. They are planning for the future. They are planning what they should do once everything starts to get normal. And as things start to get normal, you will not have enough time to think and jump on it. So this is the time that you get into the uh, division of smart people who can forecast or weather the shock and have the greater advantage. Though it might sound a bit wrong, but it is true that after every recession, rich will get richer and poor will get poorer. So it's your decision whether you are going to be on the rich side or the poor side. So what will happen next? Businesses will go digital, as I've stated earlier. Rather than having a physical office, businesses will turn more online. So there will be more opportunities online. Current online businesses will thrive when the things start to get normal, like Amazon, eBay, dropshipping websites. As Currently, people are currently working and working online. People are shopping online. Though it was quite normal, but during quarantine, as they cannot go out, they are using these services more and more. And whenever things get to normal, people will be used to it. And they will use it more than going out. Because a month in home will create some habits. It takes 21 days, as for science, it takes 21 days to have a strong habit stick to you. So if you are sitting over there in your home and 
for 21 days, you'll get a habit of watching a long series of Netflix. You'll have habits of watching, uh, playing games in your Xbox or PS4. And you'll also get some habits of getting everything online. So as things get normal, these countries, these online-based co online based companies will thrive. Digital marketing firms will boom. Everyone will be looking forward to sell their products, which they haven't sold for last one month or like weeks. So they will be asking digital firms to market their products and sell their products, which they have in stock because they couldn't sell. So digital marketing firms will boom and it will be consistent. And as works are needed to be done, there will be jobs, but it will be outsourced. So if you are thinking of joining a company by physically visiting the office every five days of the week, you should change your plan right now because things are going to change. And if you can't adjust to the change, you will be left behind. So, and investors will look for angel investing in several firms. There are many investors and many struggling firms, very good firms, but they will be struggling because, because of lack of liquidity. So those investors will invest on those firms and after those firms get into proper business, they will boom. An investor will make more money, right? So as smart investors will invest around uh, more than half, like a quarter of their capital in the different market sectors. Mutual funds, mutual funds and PAMs, like um, fund management services will be flooded with the smart investors. As a result, what we call rise of bulls in trading. That means the market will boom again. So before going any further, I want to discuss a small quadrant that is uh, very famous, that is from very famous Robert Kiyosaki, the rich debt, poor debt writer. I'm a very big fan of him. So I wanted this to be included in the slides because if you can understand the cash flow quadrant, you'll know how to plan your next move. So what is the cash flow qu quadrant? It is actually the cash flow or four ways to produce your income. You can make income from being an employee. You can have a job. Like you can, you just sit there for eight hours, five days a week and you earn money. That is your salary. You are an employee, right? If you're self-employed, like if you're a doctor, if you're a lawyer, or if you have a shop, in a market, you're self-employed, right? But you have to give your time there, right? But in the business sector, you give your people the work you should be doing. That is a smart thing, a smart thing to do, right? You are managing a lot of people. They are doing your work because you cannot do all the work yourself. That is the thing of business. If you, I know most of the students here are from business faculty. So business is not like just selling and sitting in a shop. That's that's self-employed sector of cash flow quadrant. But if you are a business owner, true business owner, you should be sitting there in the AC room, playing Xbox and making money. Right? And your people will be working for you. And next sector, which I like the most, is investor sector. In this way, your money, your, your capital or your money that you have invested will work for you. But you need to show the way. You need to show where the money should go, which is the right way. You should understand that first. Then you should invest. People in Bangladesh, in our country, whenever there is a stock market crash, people go and suicide. Why, man? Why are you going to, get, why are you going to suicide? And you're putting your family in risk. Before going into any kind of market, any kind of business, you should understand what the business is about, right? You're not going to buy anything without knowing the features of it. So why are you investing your hard-earned money without knowing even ABCD of that business, which is very, very popular in Bangladesh. People are listening to someone that um, this type A share is going to boom. You should buy it, you should buy it. And he takes loan from the bank, he sells all his lands, he even sells his car, 
and invest all this money in there. And then when the stock market crashes or the market goes for a retracement, he loses all his money. So is this his fault or the market's fault? Of course, his fault, because he was not aware of it. So as per the current situation of COVID-19, you cannot be an employee or be self-employed. Because as an employee, if you look for being an employee, there will be no firms that are going to take you because they are facing a good amount of losses, right? Currently, many businesses are firing people. Highly qualified people are being fired. Then if you are looking forward for being self-employed, the economy is down, people don't have money, so they'll not be buying anything from you. They'll, they'll not be buying any product or services from you. They'll be buying less, unless it is very important for them. So that is a very competitive market over there. Then if you're a business owner, it is currently very hard to make up like with your expenses. Like if you want to thrive in this kind of situation, when, when there is a recession, you cannot sell more goods, you cannot pay more people, and you have your projects shrinked, so you'll struggle in business as well. But as an investor, investors has lost money. Yes, I understand that. I do agree with that. But which investors did lose money? There are some investors who sold at the very top and there are some investors who are still holding it from at the bottom. So if you can understand the overall market situation, overall market scenario, you can get out or in the top and you can also, again, buy from the bottom. So the rich investors who sold at the top is currently waiting, watching Netflix and waiting, 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 waiting for what? For getting the right time to invest again and make another decade of money, right? To get another decade of positive cash flows. They are sleeping in their couches and their money is making more money. That is why actually I was motivated to be in this financial market. So is financial market going to rise again? Yes, of course. There is a beautiful quote from Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett once said, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. So yes, currently everyone is in fear. Everyone is afraid. Everyone is selling their stocks because everyone thinks that coronavirus is going to impact the overall global economy. And yes, it's true. And that's why they're selling it. But the first people, the first line of people who sold it first are the winners currently. And those people are currently waiting for the market to bounce up higher again. So wall share market is going to rise again. That's true. Though maximum sectors are going to struggle, but many companies are going to be bankrupt. Yes, many companies you know will go bankrupt. And there are certain companies who will thrive again. I will state some sectors later on in this webinar so that you can understand which sectors you should look to invest in the coming days. So as things get normal, traveling sector will struggle because people will not be uh, roaming like it, they used to. So it will take some time to, for the traveling sector. But other than that, every other businesses, including the IT sectors and technology sector will boom. And one of the most important thing is that 60 to 70% of the shares will be in an affordable rate. Because people, for example, people sold share of Apple at $100. There were very less people who could afford a piece of Apple share with $100. So when it came down to $20, there are a certain number of people who can actually buy it, right? So in this case, those people with $20 of capital are, are going to get in the market. And then when there is a good sentiment of many people buying a, some, buying a certain thing, the price will get, go up again. So that is the beauty of recession. 
yeah, we, we talked about the disastrous thing and everything that is going wrong in this current situation. But there is something good coming up only for the financial market. Other things will take time. But financial market, as things get back to normal, you will get the first piece of cake of the upcoming wealth rise. So you should be an, a smart investor. Those who sold stocks at the top and will be buying again at the bottom, right? So which sectors are still strong in our country? Currently, if you look at the charts, this is the most latest chart I've found in our stock. And in this chart, we can see that pharmaceutical and chemicals have gone higher. Bank is good. Food and allied IT sector, miscellaneous, these are quite the same. Telecommunication industry, uh, not bad. Engineering, good. Insurance, good. So these are the sectors, but the most profitable one is pharmaceuticals and chemicals because people are buying a lot of drugs, a lot of medicines, right? But if we just look at another chart over here that is of gainer and loser, these red dots are losing, okay? This green and blue means gaining. So only the pharmaceutical and chemicals with the highest, highest amount of gains didn't lose anything, not even a single percent. Then engineering, insurance, and textile did very well, but they did lose something. And when the market will start again, the stock market is currently closed, Bangladesh stock market. But when it will start again, we'll see a big red uh, engulfing of the reds. There will be a huge sell. The garments industry is going to plummet in Bangladesh. It is very hard to say, but it is going to happen. As of, as of what we are doing as an analyst, we are currently working on this, that which sectors are going to suffer. And what I can say with a heavy heart is that many people are going to be below the poverty line very soon. Because Bangladeshi economy is dependent on textile rather than any other sectors. So hope we can get over it very soon. So I've talked about the Bangladeshi market. So as I've told you earlier, I've worked with many international companies and I've been working in the international market since 2011. And though I struggled a lot since the beginning, but at the end of the day, I've made it what many dream of. So um, I, I'm actually proud of myself <laughs> in a way, but I'm also um, very happy that I found this uh, sector because whenever you want to learn something important or if you are looking forward to extend your learning graph, you should go global rather than being in the domestic, because you'll know, you will have uh, exposure of many different markets and you have exposure of many different things that doesn't happen in your country. So after I went back to the, went to the international market, I learned a lot, which, which was very impossible by staying in Bangladesh and just uh, starting to look at our stock market. So why international market is different? Number one thing, that I love about international market is advantage of short selling. It means you can make profit when the price of the share goes up and you can also make profit when the price of the share goes down. That is interesting, right? The price is going down and you're making profit. That is the advantage of short selling. That means you are buying and you're selling and you're also making profit at the same time. But that is very important where, which side you should be. And that where, that's where the technical analyst comes in. The analyst comes in, like me comes in. Okay, and international market is a two-way market. That's what I told you now. That is, you can, you can make profit by buying and you can also prof make profit by selling. And in the international market, you have different economies. Like if Bangladesh economy plummets, there are certain economy that is doing pretty well like the Switzerland economy or African economy is doing good. They have not got the blow of coronavirus that much. So they're doing well, their economy is doing well. But America is 
not doing much well. So currently, US economy is going down. When other economies going doing a bit fine, they are going to dominate. The thing is like this. If US economy is struggling and another economy is doing a pretty well, they're not that much rich country, but they're doing pretty well, their GDP is good, then USD is going to suffer. So that is the advantage you have, that you are exposed to the global world and you know which country is doing what and what is the status of this country and that country and where should I invest. So you can not only invest in some economies or currencies, you can also invest in commodities like gold, oil, even in textile and cotton. There is cryptocurrency, you can also invest there. And there's indices or indexes. And one important thing is that international market cannot be dominated. Yes, it cannot be dominated. Share market can be dominated, but if you go into the currency market, if you go into the what I can say, the crypto market, there's nothing that you can actually dominate the market. The crypto market is a bit vulnerable because of the recent messes, recent scams and everything. But the currency market cannot be dominated at all. It is a $6 trillion per day market. Every day in currency market, there is a tra transaction of six plus trillions of dollars. So that is a huge amount. No country can even try to dominate the currency market by giving all they have. No one's going to do that, okay? But with proper analytical knowledge, you can actually find good trades in the international market. There is no surprises actually. Though there, sometimes in certain situations, you might get some surprises, but if your broker is there, if you have a stop loss, if you have some limits, if you have some protection with the stops or with your entry, you can protect your capital. For an example, if I buy a stock at Taka 10, and I think that according to my analysis, I think that the price will go back to 20 or even 30. But I have some confusions. Market may also go down. So what is the security that I'll, I'll not be losing all my money? The security is the stop loss. That is protection of funds. So whenever I enter a market with Taka 10, I can put a stop loss below Taka 8 or Taka 7, depending on my analysis on the market volatility. Say I have on, uh, set my stop loss at Taka 7 by buying at Taka 10 and suddenly the market collapsed and the market price is currently Taka 2. So everyone who didn't use the stop loss has lost eight Taka per share already. But as I've, I've used the stop loss and protection, I've only lost Taka 3. Why? Because I used protection, I used stop loss, that's why. People lost five taka more, but I lost five taka less. Every penny protected is every penny earned in stock market. So just remember it. And there are advanced technologies in the international market, which you cannot get in any other markets. Like the international currency market is 24 hours open, five days a week. The stock market is around five to six hours, they're open. Balance share stock market is only four hours open from 10 to two. So the potential of making money, whether you're sleeping, whether you're just uh, sitting at your couch, watching Netflix or playing games, the international market, the currency market has more potential to make you better money than other markets. Because when other markets are sleeping, currencies are being traded. You might ask why currency market is 24 hours because at the end, at the first Japanese market opens, then Australian market. Before Japanese market close, Australian market opens. Uh, before Australian market close, European market opens. Before European market close, UK market opens. Before UK market close, American market opens. And before American market close, Japanese market again opens. So like this, the, the market is running 24 hours. But um, if you are looking forward to make good amount of trades, I suggest that you trade between uh, UK and US session. That is the most volatile because those people have more money in the market. So that time you can make 
a good amount of money and the market is running like uh, hard bits that time or else it's dead most of the time so there are certain sectors which can skyrocket again according to our analysis and this is a very confidential information i'm sharing with you whether it's bangladesh or whether it's in the international market these sectors are going to boom first one is fuel sector you might ask why there is finance and why it's excluding like banks actually banks are going to cut their interest rate to get over with the recession and already most of the global banks have cut their interest rates and as banks earn for earn much from the interest rates so they are going to suffer they are going to kick people out they are going to in, um, uh, inject some of the uh, money into the economy to make it balance but they are going to struggle that sector that financial sector the banking sector will struggle but the sector like fuel service sector that is especially digital service sectors then it sector the gaming sector the medicine sector the food sector and the crypto market is going to skyrocket again there are many uh, factors and elements that are related to it if i go to explain all of those things it will take hours so just as a brief introduction you can just note it down that full sector service sector like digital service sector that is especially information technology sector gaming sector medicine sector food and energy sector and crypto market will be booming again okay so just keep an eye on it so you might ask when is the right time to invest whether it's domestic or global, things will take some time. Yes, things will take some time, and in, you need to be patient. One of the most important um, characteristics of a successful trader is that you need to be very patient, very, very patient. You need to wait for the right time. You need to time your entries. OK, for timing your entries, I personally suggest you need to understand the technical and sentimental analysis of the market but without that without having that kind of knowledge but for a general type of knowledge you just understand that when the things get turns to get a bit better you can invest in the markets whether it's global or domestic no problem but it will take some time you need to be very patient you cannot ask for investing today and get your money doubled by next month you cannot ask that even in domestic or global nowhere but you need to be patient, you need to hold that and get into the stock at the right price at the right time. And then you need to just wait. That's it. Like the quote from the Warren Buffett, take advantage of this fearful time. How you can take advantage of this fearful time? Number one thing is learning about the capital market. You can get a lot of resources in Google. You can get a lot of resources in YouTube. I know the free stuffs are not that good, but you need to go in the corner and you need to pay for the stuffs. But yes, if you just invest in your studies right now, then you can reap the fruit in the coming days. Try to get that. And understanding the market behavior is very crucial because if you're just investing in the market without knowing how the market works, that's not going to work. Though the market is going to go higher and higher, but just getting into the market, buying a share, and just taking some money out of it is not going to help you in the long run. So you need to understand how the, what is the market behavior currently and how much you can earn. Like if you have bought a share at Taka 10 and you have sold it at Taka 20, you might think that it is very good share and it, is a, it was a very good deal and I made my, I doubled my money. But if you could wait a few more months, it could be $100. At that time, you could have made 10 times of what we have made right now, right? So for that reason, we should understand what is the behavior of the market. Though I personally trade in short selling markets like the international currency markets, and sometimes in Bangladesh market, and also in the commodities market, and I sometimes hedge for protecting my capital. I also buy and I also sell at the same time to understand the overall definite trend of the market and when I should get some more money from the market and extract some wealth 
from myself and my family. So the last point, but not the least, that is investing consists of risk. You should understand that it consists of risk. Whether you invest in Bangladesh market or international market, you are going to lose money if you are not managing your risk properly. There is a term in trading called risk reward ratio. What we do in risk reward ratio is that if we take risk of Taka 10, we should be hoping to make at least Taka 20. So if your analysis shows you that this stock, which is currently trading at Taka 10, is not going to make Taka 20 for you, then you are not going to invest in that. Simple. Unless your, cap, your invested capital is going to be doubled or you're getting more reward than your risk, you should not invest in there. That is the rule number one and most important rule. After that comes the protection, that is stop loss. If you have thought that your risk would be this, this much, your reward would be this, this much, then you should think of where your stop loss should be. So these two things are going to help you to protect your capital. And even in the long term, if you're losing a lot of trades, you'll be making some money, a bit amount of money, not losing the whole capital at once because of this risk reward ratio. That is one is to two. For Taka one, for Taka two, you'll be risking Taka one, not more than that. Okay? So it is good to start early. Everything requires passion. I started very early. But before talking about my start, I want to tell uh, two types of uh, tell about the two types of passion that I personally think. Passion is of two types. Number one, it's like matchstick flame. That if you just uh, start the matchstick, just rub it, there will be flame for only one or maximum one minute. But if your passion is like Olympic flame, that will be lasting for months. So if you are passionate about making money, if you are passionate about uh, making a good future of this current situation, current recession situation, you should have a good amount of passion. And your ma passion should be uh, like Olympic flame. If you think that, yeah, I'm going to try trading in the financial market, and if I don't like it, I'll be leaving it, then I, I would suggest that don't risk your money. Have some food with your family with that with that money, but don't risk that. But if you're passionate, if you think that this is my area and I can make a good amount of money and I'll be working very hard and I'll be studying the market via behavior, I'll be learning about it, I'll be very much passionate, like Olympic flame, then I can give you the good news. You'll be going to you are going to get very wealthy in the future. Though I might sound like a scammer. But this is very true. When I started outsourcing, I used to earn around $100 a month. And I used to employ my friends at EDU uh, who, were going, who used to work for me. And they used to earn money as well. I used to earn money as well. But as a business-minded person, I used to take some shares from, them, from their earning. And that's how I started in 2011. And after that, when I was trading and I was outsourcing at the same time, I made a good amount of money. And after graduation, I went uh, for the interview of Grameen Phone, Bangla Link, and many other firms. Most of them rejected me. <laughs> so those were the, the elite jobs. I think it's still the elite jobs for graduates. Um, I went to the BSRM, I went to AKS, everyone rejected me. There were some firms who told me that we'll take you, but you need to complete your MBA. So I went to East Delta University again, and then I finished two semesters there of MBA, and then I got an offer. What offer? Offer of being a country manager of Orbex Limited. Yeah, my father was a bit... <laughs> <laughs> sad but I went there yeah I didn't complete my MBA there in EDU but yes I went there I became the country manager and a lot of money I invested in the international and domestic market and then I came back 
and I started my own own company and I started employing people. I started to trade in the international market and that's how I've come this so far. And current, recently I've completed my CMT as well. So after CMT, after completing my CMT, I have got a better recognition and yeah, I'm here. So you're gonna start to invest by learning to invest at the very same time. I started Forex when I was in first semester in East Delta University back in 2011. So you can also start right now and start, start your journey. Just start your journey before market tries to rise, right? So learn in this quarantine period, learn what you need to know, and then act when it's the right time, okay? So this is the end of my webinar. And if there's any questions and answer, please do write in the chat and I'll be happy to answer all of your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mahmoud Gibul Hassan. Those who have joined later, just to uh, mention them that uh, we have Mr. Mahmoud Gibul Hassan with us with his informative session. And myself is Tabassum Choudhury, Assistant Professor, School of Business Administration, East Delta University. Now your floor is open to all of you for question and session. Before that, I am inviting uh, Dr. Mohammad Rakibul Kopir, Associate Dean of School of Business Administration, to conduct the session. So from my side, thank you. Stay blessed. Hello everyone, uh, this is Mohamed Rakibul Kabir, Associate Professor and Associate Dean, School of Business, East Delta University. Yeah, Mr. Rakibul Hassan, we are really proud of you. It's really a proud moment for the EDU family that uh, someone from EDU, I mean some uh, graduates of East Delta University are uh, taking the place in the world economy as well as doing very well in the context of world market, even in the financial institutions. Yeah, congratulations, uh, Mr. Hassan, for your nice presentation. Uh, in this particular uh, moment, what I want to do, I would like to summarize the things that Mr. H uh, Rakibul Hassan has discussed so far. And I would like to bring a few things in the context of Bangladesh, as he has brought most of the issues in the world context. And probably I'll ask a few questions to Mr. Hassan, as well as I'll take some questions from the floor. So uh, if I summarize what Mr. Hassan uh, told so far uh, in the world context, as well as in the Bangladeshi context, is that the industries that are going to be uh, suffering from losses in the short run are tourism and laser, aviation and maritime, automobiles, construction and real estate industry, manufacturing industry, financial services, Education industry, well, uh, I have something to discuss about this education in this industry in the context of Bangladesh, oil and gas. These particular industries, along with a few more, are going to suffer some problems, uh, suffer from uh, some serious problems, to be honest, in the short run. And uh, probably uh, after a, 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 a long period of time, this industry will get back in right track and uh, will do again, uh, will do good again. However, there is no unblessed, uh, unmixed blessing. At the same time, there is nothing which is only a dark part. So this particular uh, uh, COVID-19 outbreak has also brought some opportunities for a few industries. These industries include uh, e-commerce, ICT, personal healthcare, food processing and retail industry, and medical supply and services, along with agriculture. Probably uh, uh, not much, much of the people are talking about agriculture, but to be honest, this agriculture sector has a very good potential in a country like ours, because uh, we are very lucky. We must thank the almighty that we have got very fertile land, which always help us in such kind of natural disaster. As you know, so far we fought with many natural disaster and you have won. Inshallah, we'll also win this particular uh, war again. Uh, but. Uh, these are the potential uh, loss suffering and uh, potential uh, uh, opportunity bringing industries in a nutshell. Now, let me tell you something in the Bangladeshi context as uh, from different researches and from uh, different uh, articles I can summarize. Uh, I'd like to quote 
from Mr. Asan H. Mansoor. He is the Executive Director of Policy Research Institute of Bangladesh. I'd like to quote a few things from him, from his research and a recent article in the newspaper. And before that, let me tell you, uh, this particular uh, COVID-19 breakout is a financial tsunami in the world as well as in Bangladesh. Let us see what is going to happen in few of the important industries in Bangladesh. As you know, uh, Bangladesh heavily relies on two specific sectors. One of these is uh, RNG sector. As you know, RNG sector is the most uh, important sector in the economy of Bangladesh, bringing a lot of foreign currencies as well as foreign remittance. This foreign remittance is the backbone of Bangladeshi economy. You can uh, definitely say this. So what is going to happen in, with this particular two sectors? Let me uh, tell a few words about the uh, first one, uh, second one first. I mean the remittance sector, uh, the remittance which are usually sent by the uh, workers, especially the workers, I would uh, salute them because they take part in the economy of Bangladesh and they have the major stake in bringing the foreign currencies in Bangladesh. And you know what is going to be happen soon? A lot of people in abroad are going to lose their job. And of course, some Bangladeshi people will also lose their job. Not only that, as you know, there are a few uh, immigrants, I mean, a few uh, people working abroad without proper visas and others. It is going to be a havoc, my dear friends. As probably, uh, if I quote from our uh, 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 foreign minister, I mean, the ministry of uh, minister who is in charge of dealing with these foreign affairs, uh, Mr. Abul Moneman, uh, he has recently uh, told the country people that uh, the countries where a lot of uh, Bangladeshis are working without proper work visa, they want to send back those uh, send back these people to Bangladesh, as well as there will be some valid visa holder will lose their job and they will get back to the country. So we are going to have a uh, huge uh, problem in regard of foreign currency from this specific sector and uh, probably uh, probably we need to find something else that will help us and of course we need to pray to the almighty so that this particular breakout havoc can uh, can be limited within a specific period of time within one or two months at best otherwise we'll be in real trouble now if we get back to the uh, rmg sector let me take you let me give you some very very threatening information and in recent researches uh, from uh, Policy Research Institute Bangladesh, it has been identified that the potential loss of only for RNG sector in the economy of, Bang of Bangladesh can be summarized as 1500 backward linkage industries will be in problem and there will be around 10 lakh jobs holders in this particular sector. I mean the linkage industry to, to the RNG who are going to lose their job. Along with this, there are 1700 garments, accessories and packaging factories who are employing over 10 lakh people and these 10 lakh people are going to have some serious problem in terms of their job. And let us go along with this. One third of general insurance premium will be in threat. As you know, for import and export, international import and export, insurance is a must and insurance companies main earning source uh, is this kind of uh, insurance, voyage insurance, shipping insurance, and so on. And it is ex uh, it is uh, uh, estimated that one third of this general insurance premium uh, will uh, going to come from import cargo will going to be in serious threat. And uh, you will be wondering to know that many of you, of course, you know it. One lakh trucks and tori, uh, uh, lorries uh, work in Bangladesh for uh, carrying out this garment accessories and uh, RMGs and other things. And around two lakh people from the sector are going to lose their job. And uh, prob probably, not uh, this is not the actual data, it is a prediction. And you know, 59 banks are heavily relying on RMG sector for, and they, are, they have a huge investment in the RMG sector. As uh, you have already heard from Mr. Hassan, that RMG sector is going to uh, observe a very serious uh, problem. So these 59 banks, which heavily rely on this particular RMG sector, will be in trouble, my dear friends. So what we need to do? We need to bring some financial stimulus. Oh, okay, uh, apart from this, I'll also 
uh, try to contribute about the Bangladeshi capital market. But before that, let us uh, uh, tell you some the uh, some of the important masses from our honorable prime minister. Of course, you know that. Just this is once again uh, to recall our memory that we are going to have a 72,750 crore stimulus packages for financial reestablishment. And these packages will cover a lot of uh, industries. I mean, some big industries, big uh, manufacturing companies, some SMEs as well. But the question arises, what about the uh, marginal people? What about the social security net? This is the vital question we need to address as early as possible, uh, uh, as well as we need to concentrate more on our agricultural sector. And as I believe, there should be some specific allotment for this agricultural sector to uh, uh, regain our financial stability within the shortest possible time. I believe this is the high time we work on our agricultural sector that can give us a lead in the world economy. You are uh, uh, probably uh, all of us are well aware of the fact that the uh, food, uh, food industry, I mean the agricultural industry uh, is going to be a very vital one because uh, due to this COVID-19 outbreak, uh, a lot of a lot of uh, countries will stop exporting their essential items, and uh, this is the right time we concentrate more on our agricultural sector. Well, uh, now uh, as I told you earlier, if you allow me a few more minutes, I would like to uh, focus your attention on the education industry. As you have already heard that the education industry in Bangladesh is going to observe something very new. A new phenomena has already arised. And, you know, uh, due to this uh, breakout, COVID-19 breakout, the education industry is observing a shutdown right now. But fortunately, uh, with the guideline of UGC, University Grants Commission of Bangladesh, some universities are pioneering in introducing the online platform, online platform for students for learning, not only for the students, actually uh, for the community as a whole. And this learning platform will actually help people to uh, invest their time in the right way, as well as it will open a new avenue for the education industry in Bangladesh. Probably in the short run, the educational industry in Bangladesh will suffer because, uh, as you know, I have, I have no uh, uh, problem to speak frankly that the educational sector of Bangladesh, especially the private universities, are run with the money of their students mainly. So we must understand that this is, these are not the charity institutions and nobody in the country, nobody in the world pay a single, pays a single penny to the universities to run its operations. So universities spend a lot of money for the invest uh, for the infrastructure development, as well as this industry is investing a lot of money for quality education. So right now, this industry, I mean, a good number of universities will definitely fall in problem in terms of financing their education. Uh, nevertheless, there are some very good universities who are trying hard to accommodate their students as well as the people around to uh, take the challenge to go online and to embrace the technology to learn new things. And I'm proud to speak about the initiative of East Delta University in this particular case, which has taken all the measures to make online platform as an effective way of learning. No, probably uh, we are not that much concerned about how to evaluate the students through this e-learning because this is the time to invest the time in the right way. And that is why never stop learning. This is my honest request to all the people here. Please never stop learning. And you'll be wondering to know that many online platforms worldwide who provide world-class education have opened their gate for your e-learning. You know, East Delta University along with some other universities have partnered with uh, Coursera and such other platform to give the students free e-learning. I think you should grab these opportunities as well as East Delta University has taken the initiative to offer some webinars for learning, of course, uh, without any cost. And this is the first initiative. We are going to have a series of such kind of webinars in the near future. And we hope we'll be able to uh, uh, share some knowledge 
from the society, from the experts all around. Okay, last I'll take a couple of minutes more about the uh, capital market of Bangladesh. And I have a specific question from Mr. Hassan in this particular case. As you know, just before the official closure of capital market of Bangladesh, just two or three days back, uh, before the clo official closure of stock market in Bangladesh, the government has taken an evolutionary decision. It is first in Bangladesh and probably it is first in the world during this COVID-19 breakout. As you know, many countries are operating their stock market, but right now Bangladesh's stock market is closed. But before that, something very interesting has happened in the capital market of Bangladesh. I think some of you know, probably a few who don't know, this is for you. The uh, uh, Sec Bangladesh Security and Exchange Commission, with the help of uh, Commerce Ministry and other stakeholders, has taken the decision to establish a floor price for, a, for the minimum price of a desk trading. What is the floor price? This question arises. Simply, a floor price is the price of the last five days average closing price. What happens with this? The impact of with this is that the share price cannot go down uh, uh, after a certain minimum ceiling. And the last five days price has been, uh, has been uh, taken as the share, uh, ceiling. And that is why in the last few days of the capital market operation in Bangladesh, the price of the shares can, couldn't go lower than that particular floor, floor price. Otherwise, probably what is the uh, what the what right now the uh, market index is could have been a lot of uh, uh, less price. You could have been observing that. So this is a good initiative of the Bangladesh government and ministry as well as Bangladesh Security and Exchange Commission. But the question arises. Will people buy share at this particular ceiling? The answer is very critical because uh, in the very far, first few days, people, uh, some of the, only a few people showed their interest to buy shares at the selling price. But most of the company's share are, uh, shares remain unsold and there were no trading for a good number of shares. So this is a important turning point of the capital market of Bangladesh. So I would like to, uh, okay, before that, before my question to Mr. Hassan, I'd like to add one more thing. The banking sector of Bangladesh, if you want to invest in the banking sector in the capital market, it will have a mixed uh, uh, phenomenon. Because you see, in one point, it will lose a huge investment and earning from the RMG sector. On the other hand, the stimulus package that the government has declared may help this sector uh, to have some investment because, uh, uh, out of the 9% rate of return, I mean the interest uh, rate, uh, the bank will uh, receive 4.5% from a specific loan holder and the rest of the 4.5% from the government. It means a huge investment opportunity is there for these particular uh, institutions. On the other hand, the problem is that there will be a good amount of classified loan. So there will be a mixed uh, way of dealing with this. And I'm sure some good banks will uh, grab this opportunity and do very well. Otherwise, some banks will be in real trouble and probably we may observe some mergers and something like that. As well as, uh, my dear uh, listeners, you have a great chance uh, to start business in ICT sector, in e-commerce, as well as the investment in the capital marketing in e-commerce and others might have a very, very potentiality, a good potentiality. However, uh, I'm going to open the floor for questions and uh, uh, for questions before that, I would like to ask this specific question to Mr. Hassan, Hassan, Rakibul Hassan. By the way, uh, uh, we have the similar name. I'm also Rakib and he's Rakibul yes. Hassan, Rakibul Hassan probably. Uh, yes. uh, so I can take the pride in the sense as well. Someone with my similar name is speaking today and he actually spoke outstanding. However, uh, uh, Mr. Hussain, uh, Mr. Rakibul, uh, what do you think? Uh, 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 how do you take this particular initiative of the uh, Bangladesh government and Bangladesh Security and Exchange Commission of determining a floor price as the last five days price, as the minimum price of a particular day trading of the shares? And do you think how long will it continue? Should it be continued? And uh, what is going to be happened immediately after the opening of uh, capital market once the outbreak is over and i hope we hope everybody hopes this will not last for long thank you for listening my uh, words let us learn from mr hassan now 
and then I'll also open the floor for all for question. Mr. Hassan, the mic is to you. Thank you, sir. Now, can you hear me? We can hear you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir, for elaborating uh, the overall presentation. And um, because we used to do a lot of presentation recently, by the last two weeks, I have done around four presentation, each of the presentation or webinars having around two to three hours of presentation time. So I tried to take uh, everything and make it a brief within 22 slides and make it something that can have some value. And thank you for uh, your valuable elaboration, sir. Uh, though we haven't met personally, but yes, it was great talking to you and learning from you a lot. The thing is that whenever the market will open and about the floor price, there are certain things that people of Bangladesh is going to face. The first thing is that whenever we see a stock market or even a currency market or any financial instrument, it is derived by one thing, that is sentiment of the traders, okay? So there are only two parties. There is one bulls, those who buy, there's beers, those who sell, okay? So if the market thinks that it will go up, then the market will go up. If the beers think the market should go down, it would go down. The thing, is, the thing now is that who is the most powerful one? Who thinks best, right? So in this case, uh, the government initiative of the floor price is it's a very good initiative so that people don't lose a lot of money. That is like uh, the inter I told, told you about the international market that is having a stop loss. That is a kind of a floor price thing. But the, the interesting thing is that most of the people operating in stock market is not going to take it as an advantage. And though we might see a good amount of positive uh, market uh, price action when the outbreak is done, and uh, everything is touched normal. But this negative flow will be touching the floors, maximum floors of the prices. Though uh, there was a parameter taken already, but I don't think that it might sustain further. The government could sustain further because the catastrophe is not over yet. And uh, as there is no medicine or no solution for COVID-19 yet, and our Bangladeshi people are not quite aware of it and they are taking it so lightly, that as the death toll rises, our economy is going to plummet very, very bad. And I, I'm really afraid whenever I see in the social media or in the news that people are not maintaining it, that means it is not going to hamper them or their family, it is going to hamper the whole country. So if you're first earning person is going to die of COVID-19 and you're fearful, most of the people will be fearful of the stock market. They will not be, uh, as if we think as an investor, I'll be very much positive. I'll be very much positive about investing right away because I have saved some of, some of my money for investing at that green time, positive times. But most of the people who are less educated, which is most of the people around 80, over 80% 80 of the, uh, investors in the stock market are not quite literate about the stock market or illiterate about the analysis. They just, they, uh, just invest on the basis of what we call hoax. That is Gujo, right? So if we want to have a positive impact, our people should have the sentiment of taking it as a positive voice. Though the uh, uh, government has um, taken the initiative, but only the elites will be there to take the advantage. Most of the people will not be, will be very much fearful and they will not be getting into the stock market. And one more interesting thing that you have stated, sir, is that the agricultural sector. Yes, I do agree. Agricultural sector is a plus point for us. But the thing is that, that as the debt toll is going to rise and as the, um, as the overall situation is getting worse, there will be a situation when the government will not be able to give enough subsidies for the farmers or to the agricultural sectors. I have many friends and many uh, colleagues who are 
who have dairy farms, who have a mass amount of land, they produce rice, they produce milk, they are facing a good amount of challenges right now. They cannot feed their cows because of the travel ban. They cannot actually uh, deliver their milks to the, uh, to the buyers. And like that, the farmers are dying because they cannot actually go and buy the seeds. And one more important thing is that, uh, that is locust, that is known as uh, pong, bong, uh, Pongopal in Bangladesh, that, is, that has affected Pakistan recently, may come to Bangladesh very soon. So that is the biggest threat for agriculture. Though it is our advantage as an agricultural country, we have the most fertile land, as you have stated, but that is another threat that is coming soon. So there is currently, there is very mixed, though the curve is down, the curve is going to get down, but the things are really, really mixed right now. So it would be better for us to prepare for the worst and have in mind that worst can happen and what, what bad can happen and what good can happen and how we can get over it, that we should understand right now. Though government is very liberal currently, they are providing aids, they are providing all kinds of facilities to support the businesses and everything, but still, due to this catastrophe, due to the behavior or the sentiment of our people, I think it will be very hard to get over as a country. Thank you. Any more questions? Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, uh, Rakibul Hassan. Well, uh, what we can do, we can take a few more questions from the floor. But uh, if all the people start talking together, it will be a problem. So rather, what we can do, uh, if you have any question, just write why in the chat box and then I'll invite you to ask your specific question. This time we won't take much uh, time. Uh, the question answer will be straightforward. You'll have a question and the specific uh, speaker of today's session will specifically answer your question. If you have any question from anybody, I'm seeing around 50 people are watching this. Please write why here. I'll call one by one for your question. Is there any question from anyone, please? Anyone else to, uh, want, wants to ask a question here? Anyone? Okay, if no, uh, there are two things might happen. One, you have understood. I mean, uh, you agree with all the things uh, the speaker discussed today. Otherwise, the alternative thing might be you are not agreeing with anything that we uh, talk about today. So you don't want to take part. So I'm a very optimistic person. So I'll take the first one that you are agreeing with everything we discussed today and uh, you liked it. Otherwise, you could have a question. So uh, at the end, I'd like to thank Mr. Rakibul Hassan who has taken the uh, initiative, I mean, uh, taken the pain to deliver for us. Uh, we took your uh, around two hours for this. And of course, there are some allied preparation for this. I would like to thank the audience who have listened to us for hours with patience and with integrity. I am really thankful to you as well as grateful. And nevertheless, the special thanks must go to our network and placement cell for arranging this, especially Mr. Shafai Chaudhry and Tanzida, who have arranged everything in a nice manner. And if I don't thank the mastermind behind this, our, uh, I mean, uh, behind every inno innovative initiative of his Delta University, he is none other than our honorable vice chairman of, founder vice chairman of his Delta University Trust, Mr. Syed Al Noman. He actually uh, initiated this idea about uh, starting the webinar in the earlier, uh, at the early stage. Uh, in fact, we are not that much uh, uh, enthusiastic about that. that. We are reluctant because we had to go through a lot of works. I mean, the academic works, teaching and uh, talking to the students. But later on, since now uh, the things are stable and we took this chance to bring you all together. And believe me, we are going to have some much more greater opportunities for you to learn and share knowledge. And I'm sure these are going to be even more interesting than this. I would also like to thank Ms. Tawassum Chaudhry, who hosted this uh, today. I mean, uh, the anchor of this session, as well as I'd like to thank 
every and every individual of edu family for their kind efforts so far in the recent outbreak uh, let me uh, no, uh, let me show my sincere gratitude to our uh, students of excess academy who raised uh, around 4 lakh 